Have you ever wondered what it would be like if a coffee cake and a bunt cake had a baby? Say hello to my socket to me cake. It's gonna blow your mind. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. You're watching Preppy Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. First off, let's make that delicious cinnamon pecan brown sugar filling, starting off with one cup of toasted chopped pecans. This is a crucial step. You have to toast your nuts if you're gonna use them in any baked good because it makes them so much crispier and it brings out a wonderful depth of flavor. To this, we're gonna add one third of a cup or about 66 grams of packed dark brown sugar and then two teaspoons of cinnamon. Give these a nice whisk and you wanna break up that brown sugar because it does have a tendency to clump up. And if I'm gonna be honest, the best way to do this is with your clean hands. So just get your hands in there, it's actually feeling really nice. You can break up any brown sugar that is clumped up and then just mix it up and get everything well combined. You don't want a mouthful of cinnamon, you want a mouthful of cinnamon, pecans, and brown sugar. And oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. This cake is such a weird name, but it is delicious. It's actually Brian's new favorite cake, so he was very excited for me to make this video. This is well mixed. We're gonna set this aside and go on to our easy breezy butter batter. To a large bowl that's under a sifter but over a scale, I'm adding three cups or 360 grams of all-purpose flour right into there. And if you don't know, using a scale makes everything so much easier. You're almost guaranteed to have perfect results every time because you're not gonna have a dry, bready, dense cake when you're like several cups off because you packed the flour in. We're gonna add one full teaspoon of kosher salt in there. We say kosher salt just because that has a grain size that's standard. So if you're using super fine salt, you're gonna to wanna to use like half a teaspoon because there's a lot of salt in that. Half a teaspoon of baking soda and that's all the leavening this cake needs. Now we're gonna sift it out and whisk it up. Whisk, 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 whisk. After you've whisked your dry ingredients together, it's time to set that aside and move on to your butter, sugar, everything else situation. Okay, so I'm taking the bowl of my stand mixer. I'm gonna use the scale once again. One full cup or 226 grams of room temperature butter, zeroing the scale out. And now we're gonna add 425 grams or two and, two and one quarter cup of sugar. It's time to mix this up until it is light and fluffy. The easiest way to do that is with a stand mixer fitted with a paddle attachment. So lock that mixer in place and get to beating on low at first and then move up all the way to high. I would beat this for about three to four minutes. You'll be the judge of when it's perfectly light and fluffy and I'll show you what that looks like. While this is mixing, let's crack six eggs into a small bowl so they're ready to go. All right, after a few minutes, you can take a break, thank your mixer, and then scrape the bowl down. We don't wanna have any unmixed nonsense at the bottom. The best cake batters are mixed until just combined for the dry and wet ingredients, and they're all homogenous, so you don't wanna have a little pocket of butter or sugar hanging out the bottom. That's ready, and I just wanna show you really quickly. This is a light and fluffy mixture. It's like little beautiful clouds that are just a creamy color. While the mixer is on medium, we're gonna add the eggs one at a time, and then you'll be mixing, scraping down, taking a little break. Just get it to be a nice homogenous consistency. In you go. Whoa. Well, or two at a time. Okay, you have a better view of this than I do, but I'm looking into a wonderful, like, lemony yellow mixture, but you're probably seeing a lot of butter and sugar on the bottom with a little bit of egg on top. So that means you definitely have to scrape the bowl down. And let me just show you what's, look at this. It's a big lump of butter and sugar with a soupy mixture of eggs on top, which is absolutely not what you want. So scrape, scrape, scrape. And don't be concerned if you see the mixture's broken a bit. It's not gonna be completely silky, wonderful. You might have little granules of egg and butter here and there. Mix once more until silky smooth. After the eggs have been completely incorporated, it's time to dump in that dry mixture. So you're gonna 
unlock your mixer, add the flour, and we're gonna mix until almost combined. So it's not gonna be fully incorporated, but it's gonna be close. Mix on low until almost combined. And it comes together so quickly, just keep an eye on it. Don't walk away at this point. Okay. It's almost combined. A little bit of flour here and there, not a big deal. Scrape that bowl down and kind of fold in the dry mixture a little bit because there's a lot of soupiness on the bottom. To the mixture, I'm adding one full cup of sour cream. This is the amazing ingredient that just makes this a really tender cake. It's slightly acidic and that does some amazing things with the baking soda you added. I'm also gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla. One and two. That is the magical ingredient. Just two teaspoons does amazing things. Plop that mixer down, mix on low until just combined. And a lot of times I like to mix until almost combined, as you know, and then use a spatula to finish it off by hand. That's how you have the most control over your batter and you'll always be assured the batter will be perfectly mixed, not overmixed. Finish things off by hand and just folding in some of the sour cream and uh, butter that's hither and thither unmixed. That looks great and it smells even better. We're gonna prep our bunt pan now. This is the big, the big sized bunt. You can use any style you'd like. I love buttering and flouring my cake pans, but for bunts, it's so much easier to use baking spray if you have it on hand. So just liberally spray the inside, get all the nooks and crannies. This is all prepped and here's the deal. We're gonna add half of the batter in and it doesn't matter if it's exactly perfect or not because the nuts will be moving around just a little bit. And I'm totally eyeballing like what half is, so <laughs> don't worry if it's not perfect. And then just use your spatula to smooth that out a bit. And if you want to, you can like tap it down, like just try to get some air bubbles out so there's a perfect finish on the bottom. Now for the magic, we're gonna add our pecan filling in there. So get it all out there, make a nice even-ish layer. Now we're gonna add the remaining batter over the pecans. This is an instance where you're using every single drop of batter because it's gonna be so delicious. You don't wanna waste anything. Smooth the batter over the top. We're gonna pop this into the oven at 325. It's a lower temperature for 70 minutes. It's a longer time. Low and slow is gonna give you the most soft, tender, amazing cake. So just trust me on the temperature and time. After about 70 minutes, your Sakatumi cake is ready to come out of the oven. You can check it with a skewer. It should come out clean. Let it rest in the pan for about five minutes and then invert it onto a wire rack. Say some hopeful thoughts and let's see if it comes out. Perfect, look at that, that's beautiful. A really nice color, it's soft. All we have to do is wait for it to cool down but in the meantime, let's you and I make a delicious vanilla glaze for this cake. So we're gonna add two cups of powdered sugar into a large bowl and I'm sifting it, but you don't have to do that. This is a pet peeve of mine when there's little rocks of powdered sugar and they don't mix well. Now we're gonna drizzle in about three tablespoons of milk and one teaspoon of vanilla. In you go. Whisk this up. It's gonna be kind of a soup at first, but then it'll come together. So you can see I have a nice drizzling consistency right now. This is the exact consistency you want. Spoon the glaze over and it'll find its own way to have beautiful drips. And then you can kind of nudge it in one direction either way if needed. This is gonna be so good. So I cut into my Sakatumi cake and look at that ribbon of pecan, brown sugar, cinnamon amazingness. Before I take a bite, if you like this video, check out my Easy Cake playlist. Best cake ever. I really hope you get a chance to make this recipe and I'll see you in the next video.